Hi everyone, welcome to Rodha, my name is Ari Prakash and uh, welcome to Geometric Practice Session of Advanced Level. So we are continuing continue the series here and I hope you are in best of your mental phase right now, of your preparation phase also, with cat around the corner. Okay, so before that we, we start, we have our test series of information and this time we have this IIFT test series, one of the top 20 colleges of India. Such a, such a nice college, right, and this IFT mock this previous year paper is absolutely free for everyone in the mock form okay and its analysis is done actually so on the same day so once we have this paper on 10 am at, at on 18th november at 10 am and the same day analysis will be done at 2 pm at uh, 3 30 pm and at 6 pm right so once you enroll through the enrollment link that i will post in the comment you will get all such notifications okay so don't miss out guys also the analysis session so after giving our test of i actual ift you should know that what is the pro what is the problem in your preparation because i told you please fill the ift form everybody it is it is a very very good college ift qa is almost of cat level ift di is only calculative no log no logical di is, is asked in ift ift lr is very simple level and IFT RCs are also very simple, just lengthy RCs, but mostly a story kind of RC. Okay, so uh, it all, all in all, it is easier than CAT, right? So if you are prepared well for CAT, you should give IFT exam also. Fine. It also contains GK, and in GK, last six months, GK, GK is very important, right? Last six to nine months, you can say, you can put last nine months current affairs actually. If you can do this last nine months current affairs from any good YouTube channel, any bank PO YouTube channel, good bank PO YouTube channel, right? You can just cover all the this uh, GQ of IFT, okay, and then you can easily excel in the IFT exam, right? Chalo then, let's start with our practice session here. So here, let's look at the first question of this. A very good question, advanced level questions we'll discuss, guys. Okay. The question is actually a triangle is drawn with integer sides. Two sides are of length x and y. Two sides are of length x and y. Okay, such that. There is a relation between x and y here that x y minus 7 whole is square is equal to x square plus y square. Right. The question is what is the what is the ratio of number of obtuse triangles or obtuse angle triangles formed to total number of triangles formed to total number of triangles formed in this situation right that's the question so very nice question just try this question pause this video and try this question wise guys uh, so let's see this. Uh, now if if you want to look at this question here so this question says that a triangle is drawn with integer sides with two sides are of length x and y such so that x y minus 7 whole square is equal to x square plus y square. What is the ratio of the number of obtuse angle triangles formed to total number of triangles formed here? Now, to solve such questions actually, now let's assume any triangle, right? So we'll assume a triangle with, uh, obviously sides are, let's say x and y. So two sides are given as x and y, and let's assume third side as z also here, fine. So if I try to break this, this data here, so this x, y minus seven whole square is equal to x square plus y square correct right now i just try to uh, write this uh, x uh, this uh, x square y square and this profit square form because obviously you can see it's a series of profit square it's a equation of profit square right okay so basically so if you expand this equation guys i'll get x square y square plus 49 minus 14 x y is equal to x square plus y square so obviously if you want to convert this equation looks like a perfect square form we want to convert to a perfect square form so basically what i'll do here i'll just add because this is x square, this is x square plus y square 
I'll just add 2xy, right? Basically, I'll add 2xy here and I'll subtract 2xy here, right? This 2xy after adding, actually, it becomes uh, x plus y whole square and this minus 2xy will come here. This will actually make it this x square y square plus 49 minus uh, 12xy is equal to x plus y whole square I can write here. Correct. And similarly, I can also change this in the form of xy, uh, some whole square, right? This basically, this you can convert it in the form of perfect square base. So once you want to convert it into form of perfect square here, so x square y square, it is actually a square, obviously, right? Okay. And then we have got minus 2ab form. So minus 2ab form actually. So in the place of a, we have xy actually. So now in that case, b will be 6. Okay. So a 2ab, so a is xy, b is 6 here. That means how we can break this? I can break this in the form of what? xy minus 6 whole square. Okay. And uh, plus, uh, so in this plus 36 is used here. So I'm left with plus 13, right? So I'm left with plus 13 outside is equal to x plus y whole square. And if you write like this, so we can write this actually here like this. Okay. So x plus y whole square minus xy minus 6 whole square that is equal to 13 here, 13, right? This equal to 13. So now you can see guys, so a basically a square minus b square, that difference is of 13 actually, right? So if you look at the perfect square, so difference of any two pop because x and y are already integers, right? Okay. So this two will be integers square. So if you, if you think about those perfect squares, right? like 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, then 16, then 25, then 36, then 49, then 64, right? So you see that I want difference of 13 actually. So difference of 13 occurs in 36 and 49 here, right? That means I can put one value here as 49 and I can put one value here as 36 actually. So 49 minus 36, the value will get as 13, right? And now after this, I can actually see this 49 minus 36 is equal to 13. So that means x plus y would be 49 here and xy minus 6 is equal to 36 here, right? So basically I can write now if x plus y whole square is 49, that means x plus y is equal to 7. And similarly, xy minus 36 whole square is 36. In that case, xy minus 6 is 6. In that case, xy is equal to 12, right? Basically, x plus y is 7 and x y is 12. So obviously, only 3 and 4 will satisfy here. That means basically, x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4 or vice versa can happen here. Okay. So once you've got this value of x is equal to uh, uh, 3 and y is equal to 4. Now, what we know here, difference of 2, oh, sorry. Uh, now, basically, what you know here, the third side is z actually. Okay. So we, we need to find the total number of triangles formed to number of obtuse angle triangles formed here. Right. So if X is equal to three and Y is equal to four, how many triangles uh, basically with uh, these two sides as three and four, how many triangles we can form here? Right. So basically what I can say with Z is, uh, Z is a third side guys here. So Z should be, Z should be less than difference of two sides. So, uh, sorry, more than difference of two sides. So Z should be greater than four minus three. That is one. And Z should be less than sum of two sides. That is seven. Right. So basically, uh, this is a funda, right? We know na, that uh, any triangle, any uh, where two sides of a triangle are uh, one and seven, uh, any, well, let's, let's say A and B, right? So the third side C will be always more than their difference of other two sides and it will be less than sum of two sides, right? So basically, three plus four is seven here and three, four and three difference is one here, right? So Z is between one and seven. Once Z is in between one and seven, Z can take the value two, three, four, five, six. So in total, in total, I can form five triangles here. Okay. So if in total we can form five triangles here, so you, you can see here that if, if total we have got five triangles in this case, so out of the five triangles, okay. Now how many are obtuse, right? So total we got this is five. How many are obtuse actually? So for obtuse angle, what we know the condition, right? So for any triangle to be obtuse angle triangle, the longest side is square should be greater than sum of squares of other two sides. Sum of 
squares of other two sides okay so in this case i can say that if z is the longest side here so basically z can have the z uh, if z is more than 4 then z is the longest side if z is less than 4 then in that case a uh, 4 is the longest side actually so i can form two cases here guys so once we have got z is more than 4 okay so x3 y4 and once z is more than 4 in that case z is the longest side so 4 is square should be greater than uh, or as I should say z is square actually if z is more than 4 so z is square is greater than 3 is square plus 4 is square so basically z is equal to z is square should be greater than 25 that means z should be greater than 5 and if z is greater than 5 so we have two values possible sorry only one value possible here that is 6 so in that case 6 is formed here right in the other case uh, the other one also can be perfect square here right actually yeah, nah? so uh, this when the sum of longer side is now actually uh, 4 right now in if z is less than 4 so if z is less than 4 in that case y is the longer side so 4 is the longer side now so basically 4 is square should be greater than uh, x is square that is 3 is square plus z is square so in that case z is square is actually uh, less than 16 minus 97 if z is square is less than 7 so among these value z can take only one value that is z can take 2 okay so for 2 and 6 two values of z we can form obtuse angle triangle here so what is the ratio guys what is the ratio here ratio is 2 upon 5 so answer for this question is 2 by 5 is the answer for this question and it's an it's a beautiful concept right it's an amazing concept okay so you should actually focus on these concepts while solving the questions and you can uh, easily a bit of good comp question level good level of questions right a bit of mixture of algebra numbers and geometry okay so such kind of question you can expect in cat always right okay Chalo. now let's uh, do one more question guys okay so basically this question says that how many triangles with integer sides okay can be formed can be formed with perimeter okay between or with perimeter between 40 and 42 where both values are inclusive both values are inclusive so it's just to revise that basic uh, that main concept right which we discussed earlier also and uh, so what is the base what's the, what's the main concept here so the total number of triangles uh, when the when the number of sides actually okay is even is p square by 48 if you remember so total number of triangles we discussed in geometry videos right so when total number of triangles when this is p square by 48 and this is what this is nearest integer function okay so near nearest integer function means the value of 3.6 you will take it as 4 okay and value of let's say for example 3.2 to take it as 3 actually right so basically in the even in the case of 3.5 also you'll take the value next one that is 4 okay that is the one many meaning of nearest integer function okay so with side when sides are even the triangles are p square by 48 number of triangles when sides are odd number of triangles what basically p plus 3 square by 48 right so p plus 3 whole square by 48 okay so once you remember this concept so you can easily apply this question here okay this concept here so we can have when the perimeter is 40 so 40 is an even number the number of triangles is what that is p is square by 48 what is p is square by 48 here so p is square of 48 is if p is square by 48 as actually uh, 40 you can take 40 is square by 48 so 40 square by 48 is 1600 by 48 you can cancel by 16 you get 100 by 3 100 by 3 is 33.33 so 33.3 is less than 33.5 so we'll take 33 as the number of triangles when p is equal to 41 then p 42 is an odd number the total number of triangles is what p plus 3 square by 48 here okay 
in that case p plus 3 square is 48 what is p plus 3 here so p here is 41 so 41 plus 3 44 is square by 48 now what is 48 is square by 48 guys so 44 into 44 divided by 48 here okay we just solve it a bit okay so we can cancel it by 4 11 yeah and 4 12 yeah okay almost right yeah so 44 into uh, 11 that is 484 by 12 is 48.33 uh, here right so 48.33 you'll get the value as 48 only okay so you'll get the second value as uh i mean correct right uh 40 for sorry 40.33 no i'm sorry so 40.33 will be 48 here sorry 40 here yeah and then we'll have the next value here that is p is equal to 42 <clears throat> sorry and then we have this again even number so p square by 48 okay and in that case if it is p square by 48 so 42 is square by 48 so 42 square by 48 is what that is what 42 is square that is 1784 by 48 that is 36.75 it should be if i'm not wrong okay this should be 37 here so that means the total number of triangles here is 33 plus 4073 plus 3710 so 110 is the answer for this question okay right so again uh, you can just uh, with the, uh, the basic uh, the main agenda of this kind of question is just to make you revise these kind of concepts actually and you can easily re revise such kind of concepts okay uh, give all six such questions right so last two three questions in geometry in the previous videos also okay those good those are very good questions actually and you can just revise so basically this this playlist guys so basically i've prepared this playlist in the last uh, one month for cat before cat this playlist actually contains uh practice sessions of algebra numbers and geometry and i think there are more than uh, 60 questions 60 high quality questions of algebra numbers and geometry in this playlist so actually it is it contains six more than 60 right it contains 60 plus questions here of algeb algebra geometry and uh, numbers till now and i'm adding daily on in this video right so just you can this 60 plus quality questions you just finish it right make sure that you finish all the con uh, concepts of this right and it's a major chance that you can see some similar concepts in cat that or any other exam right okay thank you guys so see you in the next video thank you for watching